Welcome back to The Lemon Factor. I'm Chad, and today I am going to go over the top modifications for the 10th generation Honda Accord that will add horsepower and torque to your car, enabling it to go faster, whether that's zero to 60 or quarter mile times. If you're wondering what modifications or where to start with your 10, 10th generation Honda Accord, and you wanna add more power, then stay tuned. Before we continue, please consider subscribing, turn on notifications so you're made aware of future videos, and like and share. The first modification, which seems to be very popular for 10th generation Honda Accord owners, is adding a... I don't think they add as much horsepower as some of the manufacturers of these air intakes claim. They do add some nice sound effects, and a lot of people seem to enjoy just the ability to hear the whooshing of the turbo or the sucking in of the air. But let's just take a look at some of the air intakes available. This is not all inclusive. This is not intended to go through the whole list. It's more intended to talk to you about the modifications and then give you some idea of uh, where you can get those. So the first one is PRL Motorsports does offer a stage one air intake system for $130. So rather inexpensive. They do have a high volume intake, which is more expensive. That is $400. Takeda, does for $400 as well, also offer an air intake system. And then Mishimoto. And between those manufacturers, those seem to be the most popular. The Mishimoto is $316. This is a rather expensive modification for what I believe, please tell me if I'm wrong, and I don't wanna have any, hear about any butt dyno owners here. If you've put an air intake on your car and you legitimately had it dynoed and you've seen versus a baseline an increase in horsepower and torque, please let me know. I'd love to see that. Even with that said, I will probably eventually get an air intake and I will dyno it myself. So uh, if you're interested in seeing that, let me know in the comments below. Uh, subscribe to the channel and we will be doing our own testing for a lot of these modifications going forward. So the intercooler is the part of the car that the compressed air is going to run through before it is actually ingested by the engine. That intercooler is set up to specifically cool the air before it goes into the engine. Colder air, as I mentioned, has more oxygen and more oxygen will result in... PRL does have uh, an intercooler available for $600. So let's jump into the exhaust side of the equation. And for the 10th generation Honda Accord, part of the exhaust system, it starts off with, as, it, as the exhaust gases leave the engine in the turbo, there is what's called a downpipe. It leads into a front pipe, and then the front pipe leads into what you would traditionally call your um, cat-back exhaust system. And generally speaking, if you can increase the diameter of your exhaust pipe, that will help expel the gases all that much quicker. Now, the reason why they don't do that out of the factory is it will also increase the sound levels. For some people, that's not a problem. You, you may enjoy that additional sound. For other people, that may be annoying. So let's take each component individually. So the, there's the downpipe. And from that downpipe, you actually have your catalytic converter. So you can get a downpipe and PRL offers those as well. You can get that downpipe with a cat or without a cat. If you wanna keep it legal, keep the cat on there. Will adding the cat hurt you that much? I don't think so. You won't smell the exhaust gases. And yes, you will. If you, do, if you take out your cat, you will smell it. It will not go away. If you want every horsepower possible, then fine, go race version, but it'll run into a front pipe. The front pipe is three inches, so you're now opening that up from the turbo all the way back to three inches, 
and then you attach a, an exhaust after that. I did publish a video, it was a little while ago, about the various exhausts available for the 10th generation Honda Accord. Now there's a couple other exhaust systems now that are new to the market be, besides the Borla, the Magnaflow, and the Thermal R&D, which are rather popular. All of those are two and a half inch exhaust systems. Uh, DC Sports just released uh, a three inch. I haven't seen any independent dynos on the three inch, but I wouldn't be surprised, especially as you add on all of these bolt-ons, as well as with the tune, that the three inch would give a increase in horsepower compared to the two and a half. With that said, again, it will add sound. And I don't know if that's gonna be a good sound or a bad sound, that's up to you to decide. If you did purchase the DC Sports, or if you do have it, then you know, leave a comment below. I'd love to hear from you what you think of it. I personally really like it because it's one of the few or only that actually had quad exhaust. The others are not quad exhaust. They still end at the faux exhaust finishers. And this one actually has the full quad stainless steel. I think it comes in burnt and maybe even black uh, metal. So you definitely have different options. Replacing your front pipe back or even your front pipe, including uh, the exhaust from the front pipe back, you're probably going to notice some gains and you probably will not have to run a tune. But once you change that down pipe, I would make sure that you're either running a Han Data or a K tuner. So that one I would be best wait until you have a tune on your car. Not everything is a horsepower generating bolt-on. However, I do believe the next couple of modifications are important because they will decrease your zero to 60 times. They will decrease your quarter mile times. They will make your car faster. So as you're accelerating, especially from a standstill, the car is going to squat back before it takes off. And especially on a front wheel drive car, that means it's taking some of the weight off of the driving tires. So to help prevent that squat, consider getting, whether it's lowering springs or good set of coilovers that will stiffen up the suspension and the transfer of body weight will be minimal. And that really does help your acceleration times. Along that same path is your rims. Everybody loves to get the big rims. You're adding more weight to the car. Ideally speaking, if you're going to change your rims, do so that will result in a lighter rim per corner. On top of that, get a good set of tires. This seems to be the one area that most people just forget the most and it's astonishing to me that that's the case because everything else you do to your car, it all sits on your tires. If you have crappy tires with no grip, it doesn't matter how much horsepower you're going to produce. If you wanna go up a size in tires, that's fine. I wouldn't recommend going from you know 18 to 19 to 20 as far as rim size. If you wanna increase the width a little bit, I think that will help with traction. So think about that, the weight of the rim and a good quality sticky tire, the combination of the two will really help your acceleration times. The next thing on the list, which I consider the best bang for the buck is a proper ECU tune. And that can either be Han Data, it could be K Tuner, which seemed to be the most popular. I do not have a personal preference at this time. I have used Han Data in the past. Both of them can be very effective. I do not believe that one is far superior than the other one. However, I'm going to find out. If you're interested in learning more about the K-Tuner, I have purchased a K-Tuner. I am going to install the K-Tuner. I'm gonna go through all of the features of a K-Tuner. I haven't used a K-Tuner before. I see a lot of information out there. I wanna familiarize myself with the K-Tuner. And if you'd like to do so, then subscribe, turn on notifications so you're made aware of future videos. You'll be able to go through the process of me installing it, 
dynoing it, if you're interested in finding out truly how much horsepower the K-Tuner adds on an otherwise stock car, I'm gonna do that. We're gonna see if those claims on all of these websites are true. And then I'm gonna add the different bolt-ons to see how much additional horsepower can be gained. Relatively speaking, easy install, you're gonna get the horsepower gains. Uh, you can either do it on an otherwise stock car and not change anything else. So if you wanna add horsepower, but you don't wanna add noise, if you don't wanna change the sound of your car, I think that's a perfect performance modification. However, if you're adding all these bolt-ons and you wanna optimize how they all work together, then definitely get a Honda or a K-Tuner. They have base maps that you can go in and select based on the bolt-ons that you already have. So it will work with them right out of the box. And then on top of that, you can get custom tunes done specific to your car to eke out every horsepower and torque possible for your build. So yes, I left out for now, there is ethanol, but I wanted to keep this to the basic bolt-ons, including a tune, things that you can do yourself and switch out. And yes, the ethanol, uh, will add additional horsepower. On top of that, you can install a bigger turbo. Most people are upgrading their stock OEM turbo to a Honda Civic Type R turbo. And although I'm sure we'll eventually get there, I'm going to see how far we can get just with a stock turbo. You know, get some real dyno numbers and see how much horsepower is produced comparing it to what these manufacturers are claiming. And with that said, Thank you for joining and until next time.